All right, so what can we say about this area? So the first thing we can say is the area is positive, all right? So zero is less than A, all right? Now here's something else we can say about it. Here's, here's a, something we can observe. If I drew the full rectangle that enclosed the entire curve, that would be greater than the area I'm looking for, right? My area is this green part in here. So, and that, that full area is eight, all right? So this area is less than uh, four times two, which is eight. All right, so I know the zero, that the area is between zero and eight. All right, now one way you can think of what I just did is we said, let's build a rectangle around this function using the right end of the curve. The zero, we will find it useful to think of as, what if I built a rectangle using the left end of this function then the height of that rectangle would be zero. So it's like what I know about this area is it's between the zero rectangle that I get from this endpoint and the eight rectangle that I get from that endpoint. All right, well, so I don't know nothing about the area. I know it's between zero and eight. I wonder how I could improve my knowledge about that area. Well, suppose instead of just using one big rectangle, I break the area up into two rectangles. And so let's start with the big one, uh, which was using the right-hand end of the interval. But instead of going all the way to the back, I'm going to say, well, what if I just do this rectangle? And then I take this point right here and build that rectangle. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this A1, and I'm going to call this A2. And what I'm going to say is that this A1 plus A2, I'm going to call it the, um, the right rectangular sum. So we're going to call it a sum right. I'll put it that way, sum from the right, all right, is equal to A1 plus A2, all right? And the area one, well, let's see. Area two is easy to get because I know that this height is four and this distance is one, so it's four by one. So that area two is four by one. But what's area one? Well, in order to know that, I know that the base of this rectangle is one, but what's the height of this rectangle? Well, I know that the curve is v of t equals t squared, so I can figure out what the coordinates of this point are. This is one, so it, and uh, uh, I know that f, uh, I guess we're calling it v of 1 equals 1 squared, which is 1. So now I know that the coordinates of this point right here are 1, 1. This is a little bit trivial, but um, we'll see that as it gets more complicated, it's going to be worth thinking about the fact that I knew this height of this rectangle was 1 because I plugged in the x value to the function. All right, now I know this height is 1, so that's what the first rectangle, a1, is 1 times 1. All right, so that's uh, 1 plus 4 is 5. All right, now, uh, what about that rectangle that I built on the left using the zero here, right? So uh, what if I build this non-existent rectangle? That's a, a1, I'm still gonna call it a1, but it's the green a1, okay? And it's equal to zero. And then I'm gonna build another one using the left endpoint of the interval of the curve, which is gonna be here, all right? So here's my a two, the green A2, which is a rectangle that, despite the appearances here, my axes are not scaled um, equally, this rectangle is one by one, so that area is one, right? So I can say that there's a sum from the left, using the left endpoints of the rectangle, which is a different A1 plus A2, and the first A1 is, I can think of it as being one times zero, zero being the function evaluated at the left endpoint, all right, plus um, this area, which is one times one, and that's like the base of the rectangle multiplied by the value of the function evaluated at that x coordinate on the left, one times one, which is one. All right, now what I can see about this function is the mysterious uh, area A that I'm after. I now know that that area is less than the right sum, which is five, and I know that it is more than the left sum, which is one. I can see because the areas, you know, stick out from the, uh, 
from the smaller rectangles, and the area is completely included by the larger rectangles. So now I've gone from knowing that the area was between 0 and 8 to knowing that the area is between 1 and 5. So I'm getting a closer uh, constraint on what that area could be. Now, if you've been studying calculus for a while, and I hope you have been, you've sort of gotten the idea that what we do in calculus is we take an idea with a certain interval, and then we keep making that interval smaller and smaller and smaller. And as we do that, we in this picture, we're going to pack in more and more rectangles. But think about where we're headed um, with this. Um, where we're headed is that we have this tool called the limit. And using the limit, I can get an idea of what would happen if the width of the rectangles is zero and there are infinitely many of them. Okay, well, that's where we're headed. But what we're going to start with is finitely many rectangles. Why don't you see if you can come up with bounds like this using four rectangles instead of two? Look what we did. We did this is one rectangle. So usually we say, by the way, n equals one, one rectangle. This is, and, we've, and what we found here is the left sum and the right sum. This is n equals 2. We have two rectangles. And we have the right sum and the left sum and the areas in between them. Why don't you see if you can find the sum from the left and the sum from the right for n equals 4 and uh, get an even tighter constraint from A. So I'm going to let you do that, while, and, and then uh, on the next video I'll, I'll share my result for it.